and welcome everybody king demps here bringing you another bite-sized breakdown this time we are taking a look at astralis versus team vitality on overpass this is from the blast premiere fall groups there's a few reasons that this round is an interesting one to analyze so we'll just jump straight into it and the first thing to take note of is the setup for astralis they are leaning four towards b at the start of the round now this is not uncommon on overpass holding b on overpass is a bit like holding long on dust 2 in the sense that the contact points come so quickly so early on in the round and the terrorists get there so fast that this is not a area of the map where the cts can get themselves nice and set up and have a few seconds to get on their wrangle and set up their crossfire the contact points come very quickly a potential backstab can come very quickly through short b um, so if the T's come quickly, smoke the molly, throw flashbangs, basically only having two is not enough to hold B on a full B rush. A lot of the time you're just going to get overwhelmed by utility, by T's being up in your face so quickly. So I've got nothing against this four-man B lean from Astralis. It's fairly standard. It's something that I call in bloody matchmaking uh, when I'm playing overpass. Oh yeah, and by the way, it's very standard to have an AWP holding solo towards A. There's so many long angles for that AWP to work with to just get a pick full back um, that it is very, very viable at the start of the round to just have an AWP solo holding towards A, responsible for long, responsible for bathrooms. So we'll just play the round out. Now, as you can see, uh, Astralis are going to very quickly uh, discern that this is not a B rush. And just a quick note about the Vitality default, very standard, 1B one connector three towards a again pretty standard t side default now as you can see as the round plays out there's a bit of spam from astralis they lob a few grenades on b and they're very quickly going to rejig their setup because they realize that this is not a b push now as you can see lucky he only sticks around really at the start of the round towards middle um once the timings are such that the t's can kind of stack up and maybe try and burst out with three people or something towards him he realizes he can't be holding quite so close because he is probably going to get run down so he starts the round off towards bathrooms and then he falls back to take a look at this long angle again thinking about the timings thinking okay somebody might have wandered up long now um so lucky's playing this very well very sensibly absolutely nothing wrong with the way stratus kind of start this round out now dupree is going to be the first person to rotate so dupree and lucky seem to be the standard sort of a holders for astralis Magisk and Zipnik seem to be the dedicated B players while Bubsky will float. That Lucky Dupree mid hold is something that I want to talk about a little bit later in this round. So just bear in mind the fact that Lucky and Dupree are the kind of dedicated A players, it seems like, for Astralis here. Now, Dupree is going to rotate round. Bubsky is going to rotate towards A in not too long either. Now, what we're going to see here is we're going to see once Bubsky has kind of done his duty on B and starts to rotate. Dupree and Lucky are going to group up and they're going to start to try and retake some control towards bathrooms. Now, something I'm not a huge fan of in this round from Astralis is if we take a look at the clock, 50 seconds into the round, we're still a minute left. And we've got all of Astralis. I can literally draw a circle on them. Look at how much of the map Astralis can't have any control over with still a minute and four left on the clock i don't really like how astralis with this four man b hold i think what they need to do is if they're gonna dedicate so much of their resources towards b early in the round i think they need to gather some sort of information or gain some sort of map control in exchange for the resources that they've dedicated to b at the start of the round i think just preventing the rush is not enough to justify the investment of resources They've used a hell of a lot of grenades. If you actually look here, Bubsky's drained a few of his grenades. Dupree drained a grenade on B. Lucky doesn't have, have Lucky has virtually nothing left. So this A site is looking a little bit thin on utility. They don't have a single smoke. They have one molly. And what do they have to show for it? And they don't have anything to show for it. Dupree and Lucky are now going to try and start to take some map control, but I think. It's very risky considering if Vitality have gotten set up very quickly in the middle area in the map, Lucky and Dupree are just going to be walking into Team Vitality's crosshairs. They don't in this round, but it doesn't take away the possibility, and I just don't like the look of this. One minute and four on the clock, and all of Astralis are within, like, you know, in-game, like, 50 meters. I don't think it's the best use of their resources on B. So as you can see, Lucky and Dupree are going to start to walk towards middle to take some fights here. 
Now, this is where we need to take a look at... Bam! We need to get set up to take a better look at some of this mid control. Now, we see Lucky and Dupree. They've just entered bathrooms. So they're going to start now trying to walk up. Dupree is just escorting Lucky here. Um, he's basically... Lucky is going to take the shot and fall back. And Dupree is there to kind of play goalkeeper and make sure nobody can run Lucky down. Now, Vitality take this area of the map pretty dry. Um, they've already kind of been poking around towards mid. Um, they've heard absolutely nothing. So unless there's an AWPA set up on an angle, um, Vitality aren't going to run into anything. So I don't mind the gamble of kind of clearing the top and mid relatively dry here. Now, they've just started to use their utility here. Kyojin with a great Molotov. Let's just show you where that one fell. Fell over here. Forces Lucky and Dupree back. This shows, I think, a great understanding of the map from Vitality. I think they understand that this is a timing upon which Astralis might be looking to re-aggress bathrooms um, because they haven't seen Astralis set up at all aggressively in this part of the map. They, in their heads, think, okay, Astralis, this is probably the right sort of timing for a re-aggression to try and retake map to control, to try and maybe catch somebody from Vitality maybe lacking a little bit after they've taken some map control. Um, even if this is just part of a standard Vitality default, it just shows a good understanding of the map to molly that location. Um, I think the way the utility is used here from Vitality is, is very efficient, and I like it. As you can see, Kyojin is going to throw a flashbang here. This allows Ziwu and Kyojin to get into bathrooms safely. They're going to go and clear out towards long and long bathrooms. And we just remember, we saw Kyojin and Ziwu kind of clear out this angle. They've cleared out over here. Uh, we know there's no funny business going on back here. So what's the only place that Vitality needs to worry about? That short angle. So they flash it. They get out the top of the connector. They get all of this map control. Um, yes, they've invested a few grenades, but I think the grenades were used efficiently and they've got a lot of map control for it. Now, as you can see, the utility that Vitality has used has kind of limited Lucky to only really being able to look on down this angle. Um, Lucky, I don't think, can take the risk of kind of re-aggressing this part of bathrooms because Vitality could have gotten control of this, could have two people set up here. So I think rather than taking that risk, and I like this again from Lucky, I think this is perfectly sensible play, is he instead decides to take the kind of one angle that Vitality haven't completely taken away from him. Now, we're going to take a look at this next part of the round from this vantage point. And as we can see, Lucky is set up on this angle on short A. And Vitality are walking towards him. Apex is currently coming down long. So this is going to be an A finish. Now, Astralis are actually set up pretty well to counter this. This setup on short should be enough to at least get two to three kills on the short push. Bubski is keeping an eye on long, so there's going to be no pesky backstab from Apex shooting these guys in the back or in the sides of the head. So I like the Astralis setup here. They're set up very well for how the round is going to play out. And they've actually not, in the end, been punished for that lack of map control towards the start of the round. Now, what we're going to see is if you just keep an eye towards the back of the screen there, Shox is coming up a connector now, and he is about to get... Bang! There you go. He's about to get taken out by Lucky. Now, I think this is the first point where I would say there's kind of a really obvious mistake. And I think it comes down to something that I've heard talked about, and it is Lucky's communication. It has been said that he's not the most communicative guy. And you can see on the player cams when you're watching them play, he says very, very little. He's one of the least talkative members of Astralis. It's not surprising for a brand new player, but I think this is where potentially some issues arise around that lack of communication. Now... Once Lucky takes this shot on shocks, Lucky needs to be screaming for Dupree to come and help him because immediately we get some movement from Vitality and some footsteps. And it isn't until Lucky's name is in the kill feed that Dupree actually starts moving to help. I think a slightly more communicative player would have said something. Right here, as soon as he takes a shot. He takes that shot 25 seconds. And he doesn't get run down to kills until 23, 22 seconds. That's a full couple of seconds where Dupree is basically disadvantaged by those few seconds. I think a more vocal player asks for help a lot quicker or says something to Dupree a lot quicker. And he is probably on this angle and already training Masuta by the time Lucky goes down. Instead, what happens is he does a bit of damage to Masuta, but he's forced to come back. And it's just mowed down by Kyojin swinging out of bathrooms. Now, I think Lucky probably needs to do better here anyway. I think the first shot the Shocks gave him was kind of a freebie. This setup here isn't banking on getting that freebie long shot towards Connector. This setup is designed to kind of stop this bathroom's take, this, this A take coming up short. 
and the player coming through bathrooms, debris watching bathrooms, the AWP watching a very favorable, nice long angle here on short A. I think Lucky needs to get the second kill there. Let's just run it back. He gets that first one, which is basically a freebie. I think he needs to get this second kill here. The fact that he whiffs this shot, um, he probably should be hitting this shot and getting another one. Even with that going down, I think Dupree will be disappointed to have not traded one there. Um, or at least gotten some more damage up here. I think the fact that he gets a bit of damage on both but doesn't trade either of them. It, unfortunately, it's just not good enough on that hold. They needed to get at least two kills, go two for two, turn it into a 3v3. Preferably with some damage dealt as well. I think if one of these members of the attack is gone, then this is a lot easier for Bubski to kind of make something happen on his version of the hold or on his portion of the hold, sorry. And this round is probably a lot closer, but we'll play it out. As you can see, Utility is going to come into the site. And again, I think this is just efficient Utility usage from Vitality. A smoke, two smokes pop, one towards Bank, one towards Dumpster. They've isolated the player on the site. And with the Molly and Apex clearing out this angle here, the only angle they have left to worry about is Optimus. It's pretty clear where Bubski is. So Kyojin will go down, but immediately traded by Ziwu. Again, just some very, very efficient utility usage from Vitality. Um, as you can see, they're entering the site now. 14 seconds on the clock. Not a lot of utility left. But all the utility that they did use has gotten them to this point where they're in a 3v3. They're going to be able to get the bomb down nice and clean. And they have every chance to win this round. So I really like um, the play from Vitality up until this point in the round. I think it's just good, good cap good clean methodical counter strike on the t side now we're just going to switch to have a look at this vantage point because this is where magus and zipnix are coming for the retake just something to note um this is a kind of preferential thing i don't think there's a right or wrong answer necessarily here but instead of sending somebody up through connector for the backstab they decide to stick together and come through ct sort of connector um to come and attack free bank and dumpster now you can go back and forth on this uh some might say a backstab is really useful because it gets the t's turned around they can't just worry about a retake coming from one direction however in order to backstab through connector you're going to be wandering through areas of the map where you've got no map control there could be somebody lurking there again on the flip side keeping people coming from the same direction means there's certain elements of team play that you can utilize a little bit easier so it's really preferential whether you send someone for a backstab or not. I think depending on the exact circumstance depends on whether a backstab is more or less favorable. I would say Astralis made the preferential call for me here, keeping them both together rather than sending Zipnix for the backstab because of that lack of map control. Um, but it's not necessarily a right or wrong answer as a rule of thumb. I think in this case, Astralis probably did get it right. Um, it's just something interesting to note. Now, as we can see, Magus and Zipnix are going to set up a boost. I really, really like this. This is not a boost that's seen all too often, um, but it's the way that Astralis get themselves back into the round. The fact that Zipnix is managed to get this kill on Zivu without a response is excellent. This is what gives Astralis every chance back in the round. And what was a very unfavorable 3v2, Team Vitality had gotten the bat bomb down cleanly, had been able to get set up somewhat in afterplants, although Zivu did get shot in the back there. Um, and they had a big HP advantage. Now there's no HP advantage. And Astralis have every chance coming back into this round. Now, once again, I like this play here from Astralis to create some space and create some different angles for Vitality to have to worry about. Rather than being too passive in this clutch and both sitting together on Dumpster and trying to play very close and trade out. They say, screw it, we need to get out there and create some space. The bomb is already a long way ticked down, so they need to get a move on, and they need to make this clutch difficult for Vitality. Rather than Vitality only having to worry about one angle now, they have to worry about two. And as you can see, Apex comes out. He sort of knows that Magus is going to be on that Optimus angle, but if you can see where Apex's pre-aim is, his pre-aim is on the tighter Optimus angle, whereas Magus has already gotten out wide. And that's what allows Magus to win this duel cleanly, is that Apex is not quite pre-aiming at the right spot. And that's all just generated from how much space Magus took while Vitality weren't looking. And I really like that play from Astralis again. Excellent work on the retake. Now, Masuta, unfortunately, has got it all to do here. And we'll just play this out. Zignis just wins the duel on him. Not much Masuta can do here. I feel for the guy. He's been left in a really difficult circumstance. Maybe the one criticism you could potentially suggest is they have set up for a slightly 
one thing I think you can maybe criticize Team Vitality for is I'm not sure exactly what prompted the Optimus plant when they had smokes down. They could have just planted out in the open for bank anyway. Masuta would have had an easier time if Astralis had been forced out into the open to try and defuse if the bomb had been planted, let's say here, on default. I'm not really sure what in the Vitality camp went on there that caused them to decide to go for the plant on Optimus like they did. Um, just seems a little bit weird for me. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that one. At the end of the day, I don't think it cost them the round per se. Um, I think switch the plants around and I don't think it necessarily matters. But I think it gave Masuta a lot more of a chance if it had been planted out in the open. You need Vitality to tell you why exactly they decided to plant on Optimus there. There we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know the drill. And if you didn't, why are you still here? See you later, guys.